on YouTube. Tea and coffee will be served after the service today. Please head to the kitchen just through the doors at the back of the church and bring your drink back in here to enjoy some time chatting together. Just one additional notice, if anyone is able to help um, put the chairs out for this afternoon's messy church, uh, both in the main church hall and in the lower hall, we'd be very grateful of some extra pairs of hands. Um, just head on down. Um, as today is our communion service, I will li light the peace candle. Our prayer is peace in the world and peace in our hearts. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Reverend John Sook Kim to lead our service this morning. We look forward to sharing our worship with you in hearing your words. Let us pray. From our homes, we have journeyed, the journey it is past. To this place, we have come, the living God, to praise. In this moment, we are here. Now, that moment is gone. From this place, we will go. It too will soon be past. But in this new moment, as we gather, Live within us, Lord our God, and speak our name. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Let us sing together our first hymn, number five, singing the face, Father in whom we live.
it looks like um, familiar to you, <laughs> to me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the tune is uh, different from what I've known, yeah, anyway. And uh, we are going to the press, and then after the press, the, um, we are going to sing is um, glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. I'm just going remind you of, you know, the song communion. And, and repeat after me, and then glory to God, be glory forever. I will sing first, and then repeat after me. Alleluia, amen is, I will sing on my own. And then from the second alleluia, we sing together. And, and then is when we get to the uh, stage of having um, the uh, communion uh, liturgy, the holy, holy, holy is the Lord, we are going to sing all together. And rather than saying, uh, holy, holy Lord, and then Jesus the Lord says, I am the bread, is also we are going to sing. And then all glory to the Father be, that is also we are going to sing. So let us pray. Prayer is a um, screen. We pray together. God of mercy, your love for us is strong, but our love for you is weak. Follow Jesus, but we are slow to obey. All you have made, but we ignore the needs of others and misuse your creation. We are sorry for our sins. Forgive us and help us to please you by the way we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God is love and forgives our sins through Jesus. Amen. Generous God, you gave your Son for the life of the whole world. Give us the joy of knowing the risen Christ, and then let your Holy Spirit guide us, that we may love and serve you on earth, and live with you forever in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever to God be glory forever Alleluia Amen Alleluia Amen Alleluia Amen Alleluia Amen I said the all age and worship things and are there landmark buildings in Reading's? Could you tell me what are landmark buildings in Reading? Blade, right? Shard? Shard, yeah, okay. Lions? Oh, right, lion in the park, okay. Town halls, right. So what message is each building then is uh, gives? So is uh, the lion? Right, great. And what, what did you say? Yeah, town hall. Yeah, that's right, yes. Right, okay. Yeah, representing the uh, Reading Town, isn't it? Yes. And all oh, right, see, nuclear bombers. <laughs> what others say? Somebody say other things? Another one? Abby, yeah. So, really, there's yeah. some sort of things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, 
Um, yes, it's, uh, you know, the usually uh, castles uh, conveys the power of its owner, but we haven't got a castle is in Reading. Um, but it's um, banks, you know, there are banks, but it's gradually now it's closing their branches. Uh, yes, but it's a, a bank and speaks of the uh, security and wealth. And then football stadium, yeah, a sporting achievement. Yeah. Um, but in Corinth, in Greece, and the first and second century, you know, a long time ago, had many buildings designed to impress. And what about the um, landmark people, those who give a community a sense of identity? Who might they be? In ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Right, okay, great, lovely, and yeah, Mayor of Reading, and great, yes, yeah, so, yes, great. Any more? Bishop of, of Reading, yeah, hmm. we haven't got a chair of the district, I <laughs> think, yeah, yeah, um, that's equal to the, yeah, you know, chair of the this Methodist Church, isn't it, the um, Bishop of uh, um, yes, it's maybe the, um, also the uh, local benefactors and the uh, heroes, you know, war heroes or some people, um, and celebrities, and uh, maybe ordinary people who have uh, faithfully and served the community in a particular role. And um, what other then is the differences between a landmark building and a landmark person? What's the difference? Oh, yes, person's life is uh, yeah, gone, isn't it? But building is still there. What other differences? Um, buildings may be tall and visible. Like I said, probably so, you know, people can see it lasts longer, it looks. And then, um, but, the love, care, and the service given by people may be permanent, but we can't see. Yeah. Right, which has the most profound effect on a community? The latter or the, the first one? Yeah, people, isn't it? The, the, the things for the community. And then I said, um, today, um, um, I would like you to think about the, to what extent can we, as a Christian community, and make our mark and on our community, and then we shall explore these ideas in our worship today. So, Bruce, please come to the point. God is building a house. God is building a house, not made with hands. God is using people like us. God is building a house through His Spirit. If you, if you love, love Jesus, Jesus and, and you love, love one, one another, another then, then. Oh. <laughs> power. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sing the. Uh, let's.
Good morning. Last month, when we were celebrating our 13th birthday, we explored the story of the wise and foolish girls who were awaiting the arrival of the bridegroom for the wedding. The clay oil lamps we made, and they did work. Um, I took mine home and waited for it to dry and then set fire to it, as did my granddaughters. Bit dangerous, but actually they did work. Interestingly enough, the light is so small, it made me really think about what it would have been like to be in a Jewish home in those days. They reminded us of us keeping ourselves awake and alert for Jesus, who, like the bridegroom, is due to come any moment. One of the other things we did was to make a seed bomb, which the children could take home and throw into the garden or a local verge, and they can wait and enjoy the unexpected coming at some point of those wild flowers. I see from the notices today that we're starting the great big green week, so I hope you're proud of us doing that. And John has prepared the ground outside today with the children this afternoon to plant some more seeds. And we're going to make eco-friendly bird feeders from fir cones. Um, Now, you may not associate fir cones with the seaside, but where we were last week, there were hundreds of pine trees and Grant got fed up with me picking up the pine cones off the floor and filling the rucksack that he had to carry home. So I found an eco-friendly use for them and we're going to make these this afternoon. Well, what have fir cones to do with the seaside and our story today, which is the seaside? And as I say, I was surprised to find so many fir trees around the edge of the beaches. So today we're also going to think about the seaside and our holidays coming but we're thinking about stormy weather and Jesus calming his disciples fear in that terrible storm when they were frightened for their lives and their boat so one of the other things we're going to do I discover something new every week this is a a picture that's painted over wax Um, And so you draw the wax clouds and the rain, and then you paint across it. So we've got one tiny little boat tossing around in here. This is what we're going to think about today. We're going to make a science experiment with a hurricane in a bottle. Uh, We're going to create boats from all manners of junk, which we'll try out and see whether they actually float or not. And then... Because I don't want sand all over the church, I've been making my own sand in different colours and we're going to make pictures out of the sand. Uh, We're going to make a boat picture. So I remember a little prayer from years ago that is the ocean is vast and my boat is so small and I want us to think about that today that sometimes we feel completely overwhelmed but actually we know that God will look after us and calm our fears. Can we just enjoy a tiny moment of quiet now? And I'd like you to stop gently and try and listen to your breathing and feel your heart and feel that calm as we think about the calm that God can bring to us whatever troubles we face. Jesus, when we're afraid, help us to remember that you are with us, nearer than breathing and closer than our beating hearts. You understand our fears and anxieties better than we do. Help us to trust you, to be still and listen to you. Give us the grace to support others in their fears as you support us and as you cared for your frightened disciples all those years ago. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 20 in singing the faith. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
And then let us listen to the words of God from the two Corinthians. Two Corinthians chapter four, beginning at verse thirteen. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we always believe and therefore speak, because we know that one who raised Jesus, Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. We celebrated the uh, 6th of June, you know, so eight years, a few days, and then no one a few days ago. And then we remembered the people who uh, sacrificed their, their life and remember the, how the peace is important. So, and we often have a grand diaries of the ideas of uh, what will last. In Germany in 1933, and Hitler boasted of a thousand-year Reich. And then by May 1945, the system was in ruins. History and constantly reminds us that human buildings, institutions, systems, however imposing, are not permanent. The head and the shoulders of a huge statue of a pair of um, uh, or Ramses, the second, um, was taken from the temple in Thebes and, and now is now in the um, British Museum. And Ramesses the second, one of the most powerful perils in ancient Egypt, built a huge monument, temples, and statues and boasting of his achievements. But the inscription on the base of his ruined statue says it all, and the name remains, but the power and the pretty much everything that went with it has vanished. And this is true of all monuments and those who build them. All the things that human beings make, accomplish, and, and pride them ourselves on have a limited and shelf life. They do not last forever. And in contrast, we heard the Apostle Paul say that those things that are eternal cannot be seen. They belong to a different realm or and dimension. What Jesus calls the kingdom of God or heaven. Are there here any science fiction you know, and the uh, fans who can explain the uh, or give examples of um, different realms or dimensions? 
any science, science fiction, you know, pens. It's very difficult isn't it, to describe other realms and dimensions for with, you know, with the human knowledge and technology. For Christians, and the coming into the kingdom of God is like a coming home. But what is it? And then where is it? What will it be like? The Bible suggests that we can have a foretaste of the kingdom. Is it something we pray for? Or work for? Just let happen. Or all three? Or something else? And there are two ways of looking at life. And we can look at, and look at it as a slow but inexorable journey away from God. A poet, the English poet, is William Wordsworth in his old intimations of the immortality from recollections of early childhood had the idea that when a child came into this world, he had some memory of heaven, which the years slowly took away from him. Trailing clouds of glory do we come, but the shades of the prison house begin to close about the growing boy. And in the end, the man is earthbound and the heaven is forgotten. That's what he's wrote. And another poet, Thomas Hood, wrote with a wistful pathos, I remember, I remember, in which he compares his present adulthood life and with his past childhood days. I remember, I remember the fir trees dark and high. I used to think their slender spires were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now it's little joy to know. I am farther up from heaven than when I was a boy. If we think only of the things that are visible, then we are bound to see life that way. But there's another way. The writer to the Hebrews said of Moses, he endures as seeing him who is invisible. The Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. And a Scottish poet and novelist, and Robert Louis Stevenson, tells of an old bioman. Sounds like it's a um, literal, <laughs> literal class, isn't it? Yeah. Someone was uh, sympathizing with him about his uh, daily work amidst the muck of the buyer and uh, asking him how he could go on doing it day in and day out. And the old man answered, He that has uh, something, ayant, what does that mean, ayant? Does Scottish people know? Beyond need, he that has something beyond need, never weary. Paul and regards our human body as, a mere, as merely a tent, a temporary dwelling place in which we sojourn till the, the day comes when it is dissolved and we enter into the real abode of our souls. But Greek and Roman thinkers despised the body. The body, he says, is a tomb. A Greek philosopher, um, Plotinus, could say that he was ashamed that he had a body. And another Greek philosopher, Epictetus said, um, said of himself, Thou art a poor soul burdened with a corpse. 
and a Roman writer Seneca and wrote, I am a higher being and am born for higher things than to be slave of my body, which I look upon only a shackle put, on, put upon my freedom. In so detestable habitation dwells the free soul. Even Jewish thought sometimes had this idea. For the corruptible body, He is waiting for the day. he will still be able, even in the heavenly places, to serve and to adore God. And for all his yearning for the life to come, Paul does not despise this life. He is, he says, in good heart. The reason is that even here and now, we possess the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the first installment of the life to come. It is Paul's conviction that already the Christian can enjoy the foretaste of the life everlasting. It is given to the Christian to be a citizen of two worlds. And the result is that not that he despises this world, but that he finds it clad with a sheen of glory, which is the reflection of the greater glory to come. And Paul writes, though our outward, um, outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. There isn't an outer you. Your body, reputation, and persona. And there is an inner you, your character, spirit, and soul. The outer you is what everybody sees. The inner you is inevitable, sorry, invisible. The outer you can be caused by other people or forces. The inner you is always free to choose. The outer you is temporary. The inner you is eternal. Like it or not, the outer you is perishing. From age 25, I'm sure here is uh, most of them are, apart from the girl, is uh, over 20 years old. And then bones begins to lose calcium and then get brittle. Skin begins to lose elasticity and shriveled. And age spot begins to multiply. If you are over 30, you lose thousands of brain cell and brain cells every day. I don't know how many brain cells in our Right. <laughs> and the weight starts shifting from the poles of your body and towards the equator. And everyone in your life who is over 30 wants, wants you to know uh, you, they understand. They love you, but frankly, they are looking forward to it. And you can fight it, but you won't win. 
You can lavish time and money on the outer you, exercise it, starve it, botox it, stretch it, lift it, tuck it, tan it, and dress yourself in Laura Ashley or Burberry. Yet the truth is, all are from the thirst, and all returns to thirst. I'm sorry to say this morning is a bit miserable. <laughs> sorry. This is our reality. But here's what's important you will never cease to exist. Your spirit, the inner you, is in the process of becoming something either unbelievably good or unimaginably, unimaginably dark. That something is the main thing God sees when he looks at you. It is what matters most to him. So, work on the inner you. And the meaning of the kingdom is found within each of us as well. Few of us are great and mighty by the world's standards, not many of us will run for office or presidential, whatever, uh, or you know, MPs, or be appointed to positions of uh, prestige and power. Few of us will make it big on the London stock market or in Hollywood. Yet, none of this, none of this matters in the life of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is of a different order entirely. The effect of the kingdom at work in our lives will never be measured in pounds or popularity. We will never know the good we have done with a simple acts of kindness and love with a simple fluff of our spiritual wings, we may well change the divine dimension of our world forever. The kingdom is at work in the smallest cell of our body and every tiny breath of our spirit. So please use them given by God to you to use for the good of this world while we are living here. Let us pray. Lord our God, our rock on which we live, we praise you. You give us meaning and purpose. We thank you. You give structure and integrity to our being. We adore you. You are our way. You are our satnav in life. We marvel at your existence. For all you are, have been, and will be. We worship and adore you and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Let us continue to sing to God next to him, number seven, God who made the stars of heaven. <laughs>
Right, Ruth is going to lead our prayers of intercession. There is a response to our prayers this morning, so when I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, please reply, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for a renewed sense of our being one in Christ and for a deeper sense of our belonging together and to each other for a new joy in being the people of God and a fresh delight in each other's fellowship. May our life together bring glory to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a new desire to help, care for and support each other and a new readiness to give encouragement and thanks for all that we receive through our fellowship in Christ, for a new joy in accepting and affirming even those with whom we disagree. May our fellowship in Christ bring hope to our neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a new acceptance of each other's worship and a new openness to share in each other's praise, for a new willingness to listen to each other's witness to the truth and for a new ability to break out of our prejudiced positions and to break down all the walls that divide. May the love of Christ bind us together Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a church that will not be afraid of standing for the truth and for a church that will always be seeking new words and new ways of making the gospel known. We pray for a church that never settles the second best that is always committed to declaring the forgiveness of sin and new life in Christ. May the joy of Christ flood into every part of our life together. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a church that is concerned for those who are lonely and rejected and reaches out to those who are bitter and lost. For those whose lives are filled with sadness and sorrow, and for those who feel defeated and of no value. For a church concerned for the hungry and starving, and the needs of a nation that has lost its way and has forgotten to trust in God. May the power of the Spirit give us wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves and our longing to be open to the work of the Spirit and to allow him to change all that we say and do in Christ's name. We ask for freedom and joy in our witness and a deeper experience of walking with Christ. For a peace and a courage and a hope that lead others to a knowledge of Christ as Lord. And as it is our communion service, we remember those known to our fellowship in need of long-term prayer support. And so we pray for Karen Ingolstrud, Phyllis Lebeus, Doug Rippon, and Jen Guy. May the Holy Spirit use us in ways we never expected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Now we are going to sing the next hymn, 586. Here is bread, here is wine. <laughs> Please re uh, remain standing if you can. Let us pray for the offerings. Lord Jesus, you gave everything for us. With this gift, with these our gifts, we offer you all that we have and are and will be. Praying that this church and its mission may reach out so that others may come to share in your risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord's Supper and the Peace Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let us share the Lord's peace around with the people around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All oh, right, okay. God, our Father and our Mother, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have made, for the stars in their splendor and the world in its wonder, and for the glorious gifts of human life. With the saints and angels in heaven, we praise your holy name. Holy, holy.
Holy God, you go on loving us even when we turn away from you. You sent your Son Jesus, who healed those who were sick, wept with those who were sad, and forgave sinners. To show the world your love, he died for all upon the cross, and you raised him up in glory. On the night before Jesus died, he had suffer with his disciples. He took bread. Thank you, as we are th thanking you. Broke the bread and then gave it to them, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus the Lord said, After supper, he took a cup of wine, thanked you, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It will be shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, God of love, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to make all things new. Through his offering for us all, we offer our whole life to you in thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit that this gift of bread and the wine may be for us Christ's saving body and blood. May this same Spirit unite us with all your people on earth and in heaven. Bring us at last to live in your glory with all your saints, that we may praise you forever through Jesus, your Son, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. All glory to We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The breaking of the bread. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Christ is the breath of life. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ is the true vine. Please be seated and then communion students, please come forward.
Christ. The body of Christ given for us. Amen. Let us eat together. The blood of Christ is shed for us. Amen. Let us drink together. Let us pray together. God of mercy, your love for us is strong. Our Lord. Amen. So let us see all of the uh, concluding hymns of 455, 455. All my hope in God is founded.
Let us pray. Go in hope and expectation that the Lord our God goes with us. Go to do God's will, not ours. We go seeking the eternal, not living for material things, but living with them and using them to have all to see God. The blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.